It's always hard to follow Alvin, because that is a fantastic foundation for why we're here today. And Alvin has asked me to talk about what is the fourth industrial revolution and to lay the foundations for how that connects to the rest of the conversation for today. And if there's one takeaway message that I want you to all have, it's that the fourth industrial revolution and the technologies that I'm going to talk about and the impact they have on society are all up for grabs. We see a whole range of projections into the future about the impact of automation and the future of robotics and artificial intelligence and machine learning and connected internet for jobs and for politics. And all of them are great science fiction imaginaries right now. They are not set in stone. They are not pathways that we have to simply accept and adapt to. We can shape and change them. And one of the most important things for shaping and changing them is bringing together the types of political entrepreneurs and political entre entrepreneurship that we're talking about today with technological entrepreneurship. Right now, those two communities of technology entrepreneurship that's generating great things like iPhone Xs and the po political entrepreneurs who are wrestling with how do we bring together communities that ha have used technology to isolate themselves rather than talk to each other, that have used technologies in order to interfere and drive particular agendas rather than create common conversations about what we can do together. There's opportunities in those spaces, but you can't do it if you're just focused on the politics or if you're just focused on the technology. We need more interdisciplinary conversations that bring those groups together to work together to run more and more experiments. So let me, I'll come back to that theme uh, uh, in the end of my short talk, but let me start out by talking about what is the fourth industrial revolution. Alvin already mentioned some of the technologies that are involved. There's machine learning and artificial intelligence. There's the connection of the Internet of Things and ICT technologies. There's automation and robotics. And it's not any one of these technologies. One he didn't mention is uh, bioelectronic interfaces, the idea that Elon Musk is going to develop that brain cap that we just plug our brain into the Internet. All of these technologies are the confluence of a range of different disciplines that are now starting to come together to create a world in which we don't just have the ability to automate one thing, but we have the ability to automate one thing in billions of places around the world all at the same time. It's the, inter it's the interconnected nature of the fourth industrial revolution that is the real game changer. Alvin mentioned things like the first industrial revolution, steam power, and what that did in order to mechanize the basics of production. Then came electricity and the ability to do mass production. And both of those made significant changes within our societies. And what we often forget when we look at the benefits we've had in the second half of the 20th century is it took the better part of 100 years for societies to adapt and adjust to the significant changes that were going on because of these technologies. At the time when the first and second industrial revolution started, we didn't have generalized education at even the primary level. Primary, secondary education, tertiary education, social security, the development of unions and social organizations took decades to develop. Now, though, during those decades, there were a few minor things like you know, a couple world wars. So even at the time when those transitions and those time scales for society to transition to the technology was decadal, we still didn't do a very good job of societies at coming together and having conversations about the shared endeavor that we want to create going forward. It took two world wars to create the beginnings in the middle of the last century of things like the United Nations, of things like the aspirations that Alvin so articulately uh, 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 described for the fourth group to bring together communities from around the world. But then, in that 50 years since, we've seen the acceleration of these new technologies that create more interconnection between different parts of the world. And that's creating new challenges. So what are these particular challenges that it creates? With the combination of machine learning, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, what you begin to see is a distributed sensing, processing, and actuation. Now, what do I mean by that? These are nice academic terms. I'm an academic. Forgive me for those. Um, but what it means is, instead of just the, you've all heard of the big data revolution and the importance of big data. That's the reality that now all of the devices that we carry around, all the buildings that we build, are, have embedded sensors that are collecting information, collecting data faster and in volumes we've never seen before. Now, that alone doesn't mean much. If I hand you a spreadsheet with a billion entries in it, <clears throat> you can't do anything if you don't have processing power. And we've had the ability to collect large amounts of data over large areas of the planet for a long time, for several decades. 
But the real transition that we're now starting to see at the beginning of the fourth industrial revolution is the ability to process that information so much faster, so much more effectively. It's the combination of the acceleration of the uh, basic silicon processing that we've had to a point where we can now run machine learning algorithms. We can get to a stage of processing capability where the machines are processing that data in ways we can no longer understand the black box nature of. We, uh, we write algorithms for the computers to process these billions and billions of data points and to generate an understanding of what it means in terms of correlations and connections, but not in terms of this sort of historic understanding that we have of cause and effect. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean is, at, historically, our understanding of the world has been shaped by running experiments, by running a, a cause and effect test. We collect data about the world, we try and understand what has caused a certain thing to happen from that data and extrapolate from it. In doing so, we are able to build in our ethics. We are able to build in our understanding of what's important to us in the outcomes. So let me use a very specific example. When we're talking about driverless cars, and driverless cars are collecting all of the information about the world around them, we are trying to build into those algorithms our understanding of what the car should do. This is the classic dilemma of if the car has to crash into something because suddenly it's going down the road and there's either a bus to crash into or a child to crash into, what should it choose to do? Now for us, we want to build in the ethics, the beliefs, the things that are important to us as human beings in terms of cause and effect. But these machine algorithms create opportunities to process that information in ways that we can't understand. So what does this mean in terms of translating that into the power of the fourth industrial revolution in politics? What does it mean when you start to sense the world around and translate it into the ability to actuate changes in the world? Let me use some examples specifically related to politics. The amplification, the, the idea that you can amplify the effects of uh, the data that you're collecting through this processing to make changes in the world have allowed us to create opportunities such as the Arab Spring on the one end of the spectrum with individuals who are able to create, uh, to process this information that, that's coming in from many sources all at the same time and create political change on the base of sharing uh, information with each other. So I always struggle when trying to summarize the fourth industrial revolution and this is a really good example of it. Because when you dig into the deep technologies, the types of decisions that are being made at a rapid pace within machine learning environments, within the political decision, within contexts that are processing political and social data, are making decisions that do not necessarily connect to the political foundations that we have attempted to create. The individual actuation, the, the, the individual power to pr push through large systems has changed dramatically over the last five to ten years. How many of you, when you came here today, interacted somehow using your devices with the internet? Pretty much everybody. How many of you 20 years ago, for those of you who were around then, were interacting in that way? How many of you 10 years ago were interacting on a daily basis in that way? A handful, a much smaller number. That right there is a good example of the power of the acceleration within the fourth industrial revolution and the challenge that's happening with the sheer acceleration of data information that's coming in and the processing of that into rapid decisions. At the moment, we do not have the understanding of the ways in which these ideas are going to be processed. We do not have the social institutions that are capable of absorbing the uh, uh, Let me start from a very different path. Let me start from a path that I'm much more familiar with. Some of the data that summarizes most effectively the impact of the social, of, of the social transitions that the fourth industrial revolution is creating for me is captured by data looking at the concentration of wealth over the last decade. In the last decade, we have seen since the financial crash a gradual increase in the GDP production, in the financial production in the world. But what does this come from? 
This has come from the application of a small number of technologies, a handful of technologies that have cumulatively come together to enable corporations who are investing in them to develop more deeper understanding of the data flows, how to process that information and convert it into financial wealth. We now see, for the first time in history, a handful of billion dollar uni unicorn companies in Silicon Valley that are controlled by less than 20 people. What is the importance of that? What does that mean in terms of the issues of equality for the future of politics? What does that mean for the way in which we bring technologists together with political entrepreneurs in order to create the opportunities to reshape the political landscape? That's what the fourth group is trying to deal with. The inequality and the empowerment issues that we're beginning to see with the fourth industrial revolution, with these technologies and the concentrations, are related to the fact that these technologies right now are, are enabling individuals, individuals who now have higher levels of education, higher levels of access to these technologies than ever before, to amplify their ability to influence uh, uh, election cycles.